Meanwhile, back in the garage area, Mike Massaro has caught up with Kyle Busch. And, Doc, after taking a wild ride, Kyle Busch has now emerged from the care center with a clean bill of health, but it uh, looks a little bit aggravated, and I can't blame him. What happened? Uh, first off, I'm all right, so that's a good thing. But um, just out there racing, and, um, you know, I got a good run, good push from Stewart behind me and got a run on the outside of Casey. And, um, I don't know if Stewart decided at the last minute he was going to follow me and he was already alongside me or what, but, uh, you know, the best driver in NASCAR wrecked me and uh, turned me sideways and uh, right into my teammate. It was just like what happened with Vickers and Johnson and Earnhardt last fall, but luckily Casey didn't get in the mess. At least I don't think he did. I haven't seen a replay yet, but, um, you know, it was a pretty wild ride there, but, um, you know, it's a privilege to race on, these, on this racetrack with um, such drivers at that caliber. You always know it's a possibility when you come to Talladega, but after taking a ride like this today, how difficult will it be to get behind the wheel again on Sunday? I'm paid to do it. I got to get back out there and do it again. So you put it behind you and keep going. Thanks, Kyle. Doc, another disappointing day for Kyle Busch. Uh, unfortunately, though, he's able to walk away from what was a scary incident there just a few laps ago. And we are being told that NASCAR has warned Juan Pablo Montoya, the 42, about some aggressive driving after that bump uh, drafting incident a moment ago in the back of the seven car. Here's what's happening at Talladega. At 190 plus miles per hour, they are swapping the lead back and forth. It was a Toyota a moment ago for Rudiman. Now Carl Edwards makes the move back up front. They are pushing and shoving more when we come back in just a moment. different leaders so far and time for us to go over to the Chevy cutaway car Tim Brewer aerodynamics are going to be critical here at Talladega yeah, Brett, thanks. The teams work a lot of hours making a car as slick as possible lowering the drag at Talladega NASCAR comes back they put this roof deflector on here what it does creates a big hole in the air therefore the cars behind the car accelerates up Graph's really great back here in the rear of the car this is a conventional rear spoiler the teams use for downforce. NASCAR, on the other hand, they want to slow the cars down. They come in here and put this gurney on here facing forward. Creates a lot of drag, puts a lot of downforce on the car, slows the car down, makes it better for racing for NASCAR. Back up to you guys. All right, Timmy, thank you. And one driver who doesn't have a good view right now of what's happening is Regan Smith there, the Ford car for again racing. And the hood has just come completely up right over the windshield. Now, there have been times I wanted to close my eyes and try to lighter. go through some of the stuff right here, but this is unfortunate. He had a great run going. He was doing a terrific job up in the, uh, the draft, but this looks like maybe just the hood pins just pulled straight out. And that much air can just take the hood and just buckle it, honey. You just take it right off the hinges and slide it back. Oh, yeah, Doc, I'm telling you, there's so much force when that hood pops up like that. It's a wonder it doesn't knock a driver unconscious when it hits the roof. But uh, really kind of strange how that happened, unless he got in maybe bumped with somebody in one of those accidents there and knocked the pins loose for that hood to pop up like that. Boy, I'll tell you, that's a, kind of a scary thing. All right, we've had 13 different lead changes among 12 different drivers, and Clint Boyer was being shown as a leader. I say was because there goes the 24 car of Casey Mears getting another push by Mike Wallace, and Mike gets another assist getting someone to the front. <laughs> yeah, he's doing a terrific job of that, but, you know, it wasn't that long ago that Casey Mears had come into the pits under that caution, and was working to fix his car and he was at the very back of the pack and here he is uh, probably less than 15 laps later he's in the lead as Greg Biffle makes his uh, bid for the lead. All right Biffle under the assault of Mears and here to the inside goes Mike Wallace and he gets a little bit of a tap from behind and Wallace tries to head to the front and get by the Mears car. It's Carl Edwards uh, pushing Mike Wallace up there and, and Mike again Mike Wallace does such a good job of getting himself in position at these racetracks and he has a good race car and uh, he, he's put it out front right now and uh, it, he's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see if his car is fast enough to stay there for very long that's what you always wonder yeah you can get pushed there but how long are you gonna be able to stay up front Mike Wallace has won here at Talladega in ARCA competition back in 1995 he's won at Daytona in the trucks ARCA Bush series he is very good on these super speedways and now he is the leader at Talladega I tell you what when you got these guys like Mike Wallace and he knows how to work that draft and you see these guys getting right up on his back bumper and uh, 
Yeah. You know, he knows how to work that air. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is Mike has, he has a fast car. It might not be the fastest car here, but when you get out front to, to stay there, you're really going to have to do some blocking maneuvers. You're going to have to use not only that air that, that you've got in front of you having the clean air there, but you're going to have to use some of that with guys coming up from behind you. He's got Carl Edwards right behind him, but as you saw going down the back stretch just a second ago, he had some guys trying to come from the outside, and he was trying to use that. Yeah, I don't really call it so much blocking as it is just using that air to your advantage. you got to use the guy behind as you can see the draft boost right here when he gets a car when Mike Wallace gets a car right up on his bumper you'll see that draft boost that horsepower boost go up and he knows how to use that and here we got Kevin Harvick taking advantage on the high side we've seen that high side work look at this we see the one car moving up JJ Yaley up on the high side I'll tell you that high, that high line looking really good today yeah especially as long as you got somebody like Juan Pablo uh, <laughs> stuck right there on your bumper pushing you and here he's going to the lead as Yaley to the left side. By the way, he's a teammate to Mike Wallace. Those cars are both owned by James Finch. Both have Carl Wagner engines on board. And Mike Wallace gets a little help from a nephew, a little help from your friends. As 19-year-old Steve Wallace now. There's a look at Steve in the Home Life Communities Dodge, who ran so well here last fall in the Arca race, led the majority of that race, got a lot of valuable experience and finished second. Now he's being shown up there trying to help Uncle Mike in the draft. Yeah, you know, Rusty Wallace, he's not up here with us. He's taking a little bit of a break, but you, you got to think he's at home watching this on TV cheering for Steven. This is looking really good for Steven. Yeah, but you're, you're sure that Mike's out front here and saying, all right, young man, respect your elders here a little <laughs> bit. Just help me along. Stay right there. You're in a good spot to push me and keep me in the lead. Yeah, let's see how that works out. I guarantee you if he gets up and he's going to go by Mike. Now, 15 lead changes. The great thing about Talladega, you can have three or four different leaders a lap, but it only counts when you come across the start finish line. And now Steve Wallace says they've been able to push the seven car. By the way, the Mike Wallace car he's driving back there was the uh, car that Dale Earnhardt Jr. won in Daytona with in 2004. They bought it from them and didn't change a thing. Still has the, still has the uh, 2004 Chevy Monte Carlo nose on it. I don't think I'd have changed it either, uh, the way that thing ran. Of course, obviously, the guy behind the wheel had a lot to do with that. But we got a guy right here, uh, Mike Wallace, that knows what to do uh, with that car, too. Yeah, we're seeing how the draft boost works here. You see that 74-plus horsepower. When you get that number two, Clint Boyer, right up on the bumper, it really makes a difference. And you can see how they just blow right by the 66. Yeah, a valuable lesson learned there, and that's what <laughs> you're going to have to do. You find out what you can and can't do, and Steven found out that, that those guys weren't willing to go with him right at that uh, particular time. But he'll work himself back up there later on and see if it works then. And that loud thud you heard a moment ago, that was Dad Rusty throwing a hammer against the wall. <laughs> and I'm told Rusty's uh, trying, to, trying to work his way. He's got 21 years of hunting do list backed up from all his years of cup <laughs> racing and I'm told he's supposed to be in the mountains hanging pictures today with his uh, hammer and sneakers but I promise you there's a hole in the wall now when he saw Steve move up to the outside now what about the one car of JJ Yaley who moved up there and had a shot to take a lead a moment ago what's going on with him Mike well doc he's got a little bit of front end damage and because of that you can take a look at this this is part of his front grill they needed to cut this off the grill so they could get air to the radiator that was the only way air was going to flow through there problem is the aerodynamics have been affected a little bit. They're trying to massage that and kind of construct a new front grill. They're going to put this on the next time that car comes down pit road. But as good as J.J. Yaley's running right now, he's running with an impaired race car. Yeah, Mike, that's a, a great example of what happens. You can get yourself pushed up to the front, but once you get up there in that clean air, then that's when it starts to hurt you. So these guys will look for that next uh, opportunity to work on that car a little bit more. Yeah, right here we see him. He's got in a line of cars. He's got these cars in front of him to be able to bust through that air. But if he ever gets to the lead, he, his car, his front end is going to have to bust that air. And with that big hole in the front, it's really going to hurt him. It's going to just slow that car down when he gets in the lead. So he's just taking advantage of this draft right now. Great NASCAR Bush Series racing here at Talladega Super Speedway. Tenth stop of the year on the $50 million NASCAR Bush Series Tour. And it has been a, an event-filled early 50 laps, including a wild flip on lap 26 by Kyle Busch. Fortunately, he's okay. It is Mears, Gilliland, Krisilov, Steve Wallace, and Mike Wallace in the top five here back in just a moment. 